Does anybody have anything that they're wrestling with other than communication? We can go into that. For me, it would be communication and control. A lot of control issues, it seems like. How have they been expressing themselves, or how have you been perceiving that? Um, I've had a, a, a bunch of different things that seem to disturb my peace. And one of them I was explaining to Beverly and Rhonda that uh, when I worked on Saturday night, I worked in the kitchen as part of my training, um, garnishing the food before the waiters take it out. and. Um, it was just so hectic there, it was so busy on Saturday that, um, that things don't run as smoothly in the restaurant business when, when you just get that busy. And so the waiters are, you know, yelling at the cooks or, you know, yelling at, you know, other wait staff and, you know, cooks yelling for managers or, you know, just, it was just, there didn't seem to be a very little teamwork involved. And, not a lot of, it kind of became broke down to every man for himself kind of thing. And um, I just was there trying to encourage people, you know, giving them pats on the back and telling them they're doing great. And But yet, the, the, I just, there was a sense that um, I don't know if I wanted to, you know, stay in that environment for very long, you know. Even if it's just, you know, four or five months, I was just thinking, it's, you know, it's not worth it to me for a few dollars, you know, to, um, you know, it was physically, I was, I felt tired, you know, standing in one place for that long, and um, it's hot in there, and, um, but I think all of those things could be overlooked so much more if there was just, you know, people just encouraging each other rather than... Communicating. Yeah. So, and to me it looked like, you know, the, the people were just trying to keep their head above water. I mean, it's like, they, the food didn't look, it, you know, I just felt like they were just tossing, you know, they do these little onion fried onion rings, they put those on the side. It looked like junk, you know, and just, you know, throwing parsley on, you know, just for the sake of having some parsley on the plate, you know, it was just all, it just seemed very phony, and, um, um, so that was one thing, I was just really having a hard time with that, and, um, then I had another issue with Julia and Van. We were, she, she got it in her head, you know, I told her, I brought home that turtle wax and um, said I was going to wax, put a coat on, and she wanted to wax the van too, but she wanted me to wax the van, she, or she, I think she got it in her head that that would be, you know, one of my jobs, so that should be something that I should do to contribute. And so, um, I made it clear to her that, hey, I will wax the van with you, but, um, you know, I feel like we're getting into expectations here, and that van, you know, is a large vehicle, and it would be very, you know, go a lot quicker if we had two people doing it, so she came out and did it, but toward the end, I was, I brought up the issue that, you know, this van is big, it's going to take more time to wax and maintain, it's going to be more costly to maintain, it's going to poor gas mileage, and, um, and I'm questioning, do, why do we really need it? And she wouldn't go into it. She says, I, I don't have to answer that. I like the man, and, and that's good enough. And so I became frustrated that she wouldn't even talk about it. And, and she said, look, why should I talk about it if we're not going to sell the van? And I'm saying, it's not about selling the van. I just want to talk about why you think you need it. And, she, and so it kind of broke down. And then after I... And I thought about it. I said, you know, I came back. I said, I'm sure, you know, it's not about the van, but I'm feeling, you know, upset about something, and it seems to be the van that is the focal point right now. But I think we need to, you know, the bottom line is we need to be communicating. And, you know, we came together 
with the group and, and a session and things, you know, got a little bit better and, and we felt good. But if we if we just stop here and and say, okay, well, you're on a separate path, and I'm on this path, and and we're just going to live in this house and not communicate, I, I think things are going to break down again. And um, so she seemed to agree with that, but she's like, I'm not going to run to the, you know, to, to that group every time, you know, you think that there's a problem. Or, so she, she said, she basically says she, you know, she doesn't get anything out of the sessions and, you know, she doesn't, you know, she's not going to, she said, if you, you know, if, I'm not just going to drop everything and go to a session. She said, you know, I just wanted to talk about the man, you know, just to communicate, you know, my feelings. I'm still feeling, you know, the sense of having to support something that I don't believe in. And, you know, I don't see a need for that large of a vehicle. I have concerns that, you know, um, when it, when it, if it gets in it, if there's any kind of maintenance or whatever that it's going to be more costly and, and I just don't feel comfortable that the resources are there and um, so but I feel very more I think more frustrated with the fact that she doesn't uh, you know really want to sit down and I don't I don't feel that it's really productive for us to sit down alone because it it just doesn't we don't get anywhere. So, I was I don't know, again I was again, then I was over at three in laws and they were talking about the body the bodies and I already went into that the sicknesses and what causes it and all this and I was getting frustrated because I think I know more than that you know and, but nobody wants to hear that still also frustrated that I can't demonstrate what the Course says or can't prove it to anybody because I don't really have any way to prove it to myself I still get sick or at least my body seems to get sick not very often but it does since I read the course that that say oh, well, maybe we can talk about we keep coming back to choice and we keep coming back to beliefs and I've talked about how you have to retrace the steps you know up the spiral to go back up maybe we can talk more about the spiral what the what does what that spiral is and um, I think something's coming to mind from the beginning of chapter 24 is a good starting point, 464. And we can come at it from the whole control issue thing, where maybe there seems to be, in your case, there was a perceived control issue about waxing the van. Or maybe there's control issues about other money issues or about things at work and so on and so forth and everyone seems to experience control issues all the time I mean they seem to take so many different forms and the idea is that start out here in chapter 24 is it talks about decisions and it talks about beliefs and there's we could just take um, the second paragraph uh, on the section specialness as a substitute for love. Actually, there's a couple paragraphs on that opening page that are helpful. The first one we'll just go to is the the second paragraph of the, the little introduction section. To learn this course requires willingness to question every value that you hold. Not one can be kept hidden and obscure, but it will jeopardize your learning. No belief is neutral. Everyone has the power to dictate each decision you make. For a decision is a conclusion based on everything that you believe. It is the outcome of belief and follows it as surely as does suffering follow guilt and freedom sinlessness. So all these decision points that seem to be 
you know, whether to go out for a job interview or whether to send out a resume here or there or whether to take this job or that job or to wax the van or not and take that the job as a chef or as a waiter or whatever. You know, it's it's kind of humbling to start to think of all the seeming decisions in this world are just pseudo decisions. It's kind of like a computer program where you where the beliefs are part of what's already been programmed in and everything as far as the program running depends on what's been loaded in to the memory and the, the programs that's running. So it can seem a lot of times like you feel like a chicken with your head cut off because it's like the program already seems to be loaded in and it already seems to be executed and running. And even though there seems to be struggles about specific things that are taking place, it's all just, it's kind of like a robot. A decision is a conclusion based on everything you believe. Everything that you believe in a given instant determines the decision you make. A decision can be as small as whether to put parsley on a plate of food or not. It seems arbitrary, but it's not. Yeah. It's, it's like, who cares if there's parsley on a plate? Yeah. In, in one sense, <clears throat> it's, it's total determinism. A lot of times people have said, well, the environment seems to determine what I do, but, but we're going much deeper. We're saying that the belief system determines what you do every instant. And so the control issue, which seems to be between persons or between, you know, conflicts that are on the surface, really is the first belief that it was taken seriously was the belief in separation from God. And then after that, just tons of substitutions have been like layered on to that to try to, to uh, compensate or to try to um, alleviate the guilt of that first belief. So there's like stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks. And to me, when I, when I started to get into this deeper and deeper, I started to wonder, I started to sense that I wanted to be totally free of it all, but I thought, how will I be free of it as long as I'm in relationships the way I perceive them? I mean, I, I perceived whether you talk about, um, you know, parent-child relationships or husband-wife relationships, boyfriend-girl relationships, employer-employee relationships, it just seemed like there was control involved in every one of those. Or even friendships. Or even friendships. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's been helpful to start to see, well, I've just constructed this world in which I believe I'm this person or this body, and I believe I'm in all these kind of relationships with a lot of different situations and places and things, and that that's all just made up based on all these beliefs that I hold on to. So to me, it, it became a, really apparent, how can I be totally integrated, how can I have a total sense of integrity if I have to answer to anything or anyone on the screen? whether it's the United States government, whether it's a husband or a wife, whether it's a boyfriend or girlfriend, whether it's you know, a parent or whatever. How can there be total um, integrity as long as there is, seems to be a dependency or there seems to be some reliance on persons, places, things that are on the screen? So right away you can see, I think as I was initially, like, wow, this is going to really take a thorough examination of everything in order to, to unplug from that. How can I participate in the world as if I'm, I'm a part of the world and be back, be free of the world? You can't. There's no reconciling mind with playing a game, playing a role there. So everything we talk about is going to be, again, just questioning the beliefs that, that one has about the world and oneself. The beliefs that you hold about the world and the beliefs that you hold about yourself.